Good morning again, grade 10 students and other students preparing to write the literacy test. Good morning as well, teachers. This is Mr. Ruley here for another installment of the uh, OSSLT support, troubleshooting for multiple choice questions. Um, we are going to do something a little bit different today. Um, in the past, we've reviewed some multiple choice questions and we've used these strategies that you see in front of you directly uh, to arrive at the correct answer. We're still going to um, employ this same method, but we're going to add a layer to today's tutorial. We are actually going to read a narrative selection. And uh, there's a particular skill or there's a particular set of skills. Liam Neeson, thank you very much. Uh, there's a particular set of skills we want to use when the multiple choice are based on a narrative selection. Uh, we're still going to apply all of the seven that are here before us, but there are some that stand out a little bit more. So let's get to a narrative selection. Let's read it over. Let's look at some uh, issues that come up when we read narrative selections, and let's answer some sample multiple choice questions, okay? Uh, and let's follow along, thank you. Okay, you see here we have a narrative selection. Before I begin anything, there are some important points to consider about this narrative selection. Some that I would like to draw to the attention of the viewer here. First, you should notice that something is absent at the top, all right, and that's kind of key. There is no title to this narrative selection. Uh, usually an indication that you're going to be asked what the main idea of it is, though. You have cues to figure out what the main idea is. Here you can see that there's a picture, all right? Now, it's not obvious what this picture is. Surely it wouldn't be obvious because then that would tip you off what the main idea is, but the picture should be a guide. So the picture in conjunction with the text should give us an idea, and this is something that students, as you're writing, you're trying to connect as much meaning as you can from all of these sources. You also have a column here on the right side of the page numbered one through, well, you didn't need to see all of that, that's a little bit too much for me, sorry guys, bear with me. You also have a column here on the right side of the page and it, see it's numbered one through 15. Uh, I'm sure most of you, if not all of you know that these are paragraph markers, all right? So the one at the top here applies to paragraph one, just like the five and the middle of the page applies to paragraph five, and that'll come in handy when we look at some of the multiple choice questions. It'll ask us to explicitly refer to those paragraphs, uh, which uh, I'll be doing with you in a short while. So let's read this selection together. Um, I will do my best to uh, be as clear as I possibly can, and then we'll get to some multiple choice questions. While we're reading, though, I do want to um, I do want to just highlight something that may come up, may or may not, but in the event that comes up. Uh, what happens when we come across a word that we're not familiar with and then I'll, I'll uh, make a suggestion there. Okay, so let's begin reading the selection. Okay, so it starts. Is tomorrow the big day? Asked Hannah. Her father was lost in thought. Dad? Sorry, Gary snapped out of his reverie. Now here we go. This is a word that uh, you or I uh, may not regularly come across. And the first thing I want to say is, if you read a word in a narrative selection uh, that you don't come across, don't panic. Don't overanalyze the word. Don't try too hard to make sense of what it means. Uh, that'll break up the momentum, sort of the flow uh, of your reading. Instead, make note of the word and see if continuing to read might give you some direction on what the word means. So in this case, I come across reverie. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the sentence and then continue reading to see if I can make sense of the word reverie. So, sorry, Gary snapped out of his reverie. I can't focus. Nerves, I guess. Don't be nervous, said Hannah. You're a fantastic chef. Thanks. It's not the cooking that I'm worried about. It's the pace. Go. Hurry. People yelling. Getting annoyed. Hannah could see his anxiety. All right, the word anxiety here is a marker for me. That's a word I'm familiar with, and it's a word that really helps me understand what reverie might be. So even if I don't have the exact meaning, I get the sense that Jerry was snapped out of his reverie. It means that sort of his head was somewhere in some sort of space, and it would seem like his daughter, his daughter snapped him out of it. So I know that Jerry's also feeling anxiety. I know that he says he's worried about 
the pace and about people yelling at him. So I imagine that reverie has something to do with daydreaming, having thoughts on your mind that preoccupy you. It makes sense to me. I'm going to move on it. And that's what I would recommend that you do. If you come across a word, don't spend too much, a word that you're unfamiliar with, don't spend too much time trying to make sense of it. Instead, continue reading and see if you can make sense of the word by putting together cues from elsewhere in the reading. So let's continue. But we have given you lots of practice dealing with impatient, noisy people, she said. You have an advantage over the 20-year-old apprentices. They haven't been cooking for five kids for 18 years. All right, I'm, I'm starting to make sense of what this might be about. True, acknowledged Gary. It's just scary trying a new career at 44, even with the help from the second career program. So now it makes sense. Dad, who I'm calling Gary or Jerry, this word here, let's go with, uh, let's go with Jerry, um, uh, is starting a new career. He's 45 years old and it's a new career as a chef and he's nervous about his first day on the job. All right, So that's what I've been able to put together so far. Let's keep going. Remember the night before I started that lifeguarding job? I was a wreck and you and mom gave me great advice. Well, I know the person who's talking must be Gary's daughter. What? Take a deep breath, she replied. Go for a walk. Gary exhaled loudly. That helps. Any other tips? You distracted me with a funny story. Remember your lab partner who used salt instead of sugar? Poor Steve recalled Jerry, chuckling. Let's hope I don't make mistakes like that. You won't, said Hannah reassuringly, and mom suggested that I visualize the end of my first day. Picture yourself cleaning your station after your shift and imagine the feeling of accomplishment. Jerry closed his eyes and swished his hands out in front of him, wiping an imaginary counter. They burst out laughing, feeling of relief or maybe exhaustion, added Jerry. Forget visualization, how about that walk? All right, so I've finished the selection. I'd like to now go through the first two multiple choice questions with you, and I'm going to try to access some prior learning. We are going to try to use the strategies that we've discussed and we've reviewed over the last couple of weeks and see if they can help us. Question number one, which again, I don't want to skim and scan the question. I want to read the question very explicitly. It asks me, what would be the most appropriate title for this selection? All right, challenging question. This is pretty much a main idea question. The title of a selection should be a clue to its main idea. So I'm going to look at all of my options. Should the title be a new start? Should the title be a chef's special? Should the title be father knows best? Or should the title be practice makes perfect? So let's just say I'm unsure of what my options are. I'm really feeling that elimination is the best strategy here. So I'm going to see if I can apply the strategy of elimination. I want to get rid of the options that I know not to be true. Okay, um, father knows best. This option seems least true to me because this is a story about a father who's not sure of himself. He's 44 year old and he's starting a second career and he's getting advice from his daughter. So. I don't think that this can be the title of the selection because it's not really highlighted in the selection. Which other ones don't stand out to me? Well, practice makes perfect also doesn't really stand out. No part of the passage talks about practice. In fact, when his daughter is guiding Jerry uh, to get through the situation, she recommends something very different than practice. Instead, she recommends visualization visualization all right closing your eyes and imagining yourself being successful that's very different than practice so I'm gonna eliminate practice makes perfect this leaves two options there's either a new start or a chef special all right now I'm gonna look at a chef special is this reading selection about the special a chef is preparing for his menu it really isn't it's about someone who's not even a chef yet and who's going to his first day on the job after a career somewhere else. So I'm actually going to eliminate Chef Special because I just don't think it's accurate enough. I look at my final option and it's a new start and it seems to make perfect sense. Again, we know that Jerry is 44 years old. We know that he's scared so because he's starting a new career with the help of the second career program. So the option a new start seems to make perfect sense. Let's take a look at question number two. 
We will apply the strategy of reading the question explicitly, and then we'll take it from there. What is indicated in the single quotation marks in paragraph 4 around go hurry? Okay, this is key. This question, after we've read it carefully, we're going to apply the troubleshooting strategy of looking for hints or clues in the question itself. This question is asking us to go back to paragraph 4. And the only way we can answer this question is by making very explicit and very direct reference to this paragraph. Okay? So what is indicated by the single quotation marks in paragraph 4 around go hurry? So I'm going to reread paragraph 4. Thanks. It's not the cooking I'm worried about. It's the pace. Go. Hurry. People yelling, getting annoyed. Alright. Is this Jerry talking to himself? Is this two people are talking at the same time? Is this Jerry is speaking in someone else's words? Or this the words are thoughts, not conversation? So let's take a look at the options again. I'm going to use elimination because right away I can feel that there are at least two options that don't make sense. We know that option A doesn't make sense. We know that this is not Jerry is talking to himself. He certainly isn't talking to himself. My apologies. He certainly isn't talking to himself in this situation. He's clearly having a conversation with Hannah, his daughter. So we know that option A doesn't work. Is this two people are talking at the same time? Well, no, it's still only Jerry talking and there's no indication that there's somebody talking along with him. So we're gonna eliminate option B as well. It is not two people talking at the same time. It's only Jerry talking. My other options are C and D. Jerry is speaking somebody else's words. Now, is Jerry speaking somebody's words here? Let's read it again. Thanks, it's not the cooking that I'm worried about, it's the pace. Go hurry, and here's the clue. People yelling. Jerry is imitating what people might be yelling at him on his first day at the job. This would suggest to me that option C is a real option, but I want to read option D just to be sure. The words are thoughts, not conversation. Now here's the thing, that's very hard for me to even make sense of. The words are thoughts, not conversation. I know that when, there's con uh, when there are quotations, single quotations, that somebody has spoken something. So it's not fair to say that this is only a thought and not a conversation. When there are those single quotes, I know that somebody is saying something, which means D is not an option either. The words must be part of conversation, not just thought. I'm going to choose C as my final answer. That's it for today's troubleshooting strategies for multiple choice. Thanks again for your patience, guys. Have a nice day.